Hello, my name is Dr. Kate Hamlington Smith, and I am a research scientist and assistant professor in the Division of Pediatric Pulmonary and Sleep Medicine at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus and Children's Hospital, Colorado. My background is in biomedical engineering and respiratory physiology, and I will be talking to you about using oscillometry, which is a non-invasive method to quickly measure lung function in pediatric patients. Oscillometry, known as the forced oscillation technique, is an effort-independent test that is used to measure resistance to airflow and lung compliance in asthma and other respiratory conditions. Oscillometry is a useful tool in both clinical care and research contexts because it facilitates an objective assessment of lung function when other methods are not possible, such as in children who are too young or too sick to perform spirometry. It is a sensitive test that can detect small changes in lung function, and it provides additional information about the airways and lung parenchyma that can be used in conjunction with other lung function measurements. The oscillometry measurement is performed using a device that applies different frequencies of oscillating airflow or pressure at the mouth during normal breathing, and then measures the oscillating pressure or flow generated by the lungs in response. Respiratory system impedance is computed from the relationship between the pressure and flow oscillations, and this measurement indicates how hard it is for air to move through the lungs. To obtain a test, the patient simply sits upright in a chair with the hands applying light pressure to cheeks to support the soft tissue in the face. A nose clip is used to completely seal the nasal passages and the mouth completely seals around the filter opening so that there is no air leak. The patient continues steady, quiet breathing through the filter for each measurement, which lasts 20 to 30 seconds. Typically, four to six measurements are obtained, of which at least three of the most repeatable and acceptable trials are averaged together. Respiratory system impedance has two components, resistance and reactance which are measured at multiple frequencies simultaneously. This is important because respiratory system impedance in the lung varies by the frequency at which it is measured. In the clinical setting, measures are usually taken within a frequency range from 5 to 40 hertz, which is higher than the frequency of normal breathing to avoid interference between the breathing rate and measurement frequency. Now I will describe the resistance and reactance values that are typically reviewed on an oscillometry report. Resistance, or R, reflects the degree of airway obstruction in the lungs. Higher values in R mean increased airway obstruction. R measured at a low frequency of 5 or 7 Hz represents the total airway resistance or obstruction in the respiratory system from the central airways to the distal regions of the lung because low frequency oscillations travel farther into the smaller airways. R measured at higher frequencies of 19 or 20 Hertz represents the level of obstruction in the central airways because higher frequency oscillations do not travel as far into the peripheral airways and air spaces. Typically, the difference between total and central airway resistance is small. However, a large difference between these two values can indicate increased obstruction in the small peripheral airways and variability in ventilation across lung regions. Reactance, or X, is the other component of respiratory system impedance. X reflects the degree of compliance of the lung tissues and its value changes from negative to positive as oscillation frequency increases. Negative values of X measured at lower frequency oscillations represent the level of stiffness or elastance of the lung tissues. Elastance is the inverse of compliance. Positive values of X measured at higher frequency oscillations represent the inertia of airflow through the lungs. The frequency at which X is equal to zero, where the elastic and inertial properties are balanced, is the resonant frequency. A smaller resonant frequency means that the volume of aerated regions of the lung is bigger and the inertial properties of the lung dominate. A larger resonant frequency means that the elastic properties of the lung dominate and the lung tissues are stiffer and more difficult to inflate. A less compliant, stiffer lung has a lower, more negative low frequency X 
and a larger area of reactants, or AX, which is the triangular area bounded by the low frequency X and the resonant frequency. A larger AX reflects heterogeneity in ventilation, or that the volume of aerated regions in the lung is smaller, which can occur from airway obstruction or collapse. In the clinical setting, these measurements from oscillometry tests can be used to assess responsiveness to bronchodilator. Current guidelines suggest a significant bronchodilator response with at least 40% decrease in low frequency resistance, 50% increase in low frequency reactance, and 80% decrease in AX compared to the baseline measurements. At Children's Hospital Colorado, my colleagues and I are conducting research to determine how oscillometry can best be used to assess lung function and treatment responses over time in children with respiratory disease who are unable to perform other effort-dependent lung function tests like spirometry because of age, developmental stage, or current disease status. We believe that oscillometry is an important quantitative outcome measure in clinical trials of respiratory treatments because it allows inclusion of children who have been previously excluded from research study participation because of inability to perform the forced maneuvers of spirometry. Our studies include two to four-year-old toddlers with recurrent wheeze and other complex airway conditions like dysphagia and tracheomalacia, children with trisomy 21, children with developmental delays, and children who are presenting to the emergency part department with an acute asthma exacerbation. In summary, oscillometry can be a useful tool in clinical care to evaluate bronchodilator response and airway reactivity starting at a very young age, to distinguish between large and small airway obstruction, to identify heterogeneity in ventilation, and because it is a sensitive measure capable of detecting small changes in lung function, provide meaningful feedback about the effectiveness of treatment plans over time. Please see the selected references on the slide and feel free to contact me with any questions. Thank you.